Hi, I'm Stephen Roman Hughes, and um, I'm here to talk about a little bit about my my story, um, just how I got into the industry. I'm an actor now, um, and I started a long time ago, probably in um, in in the 80s, late 80s. I was like heavily into break dancing, and I suppose coming from quite a difficult background, uh, my parents were kind of at each other's throats through most of my childhood, and they divorced and. Uh, I think um, I'm trying to trying to locate, you know, what you're passionate about, and then I, I sort of discovered break dancing, and that was kind of the only thing I was really passionate about. Maybe football, um, but the movement stuff I was I was really good at. So I ended up going into um, a ballet school, but I didn't do that until I was 21. Um, so that's very late. Um, so playing a lot of catch up, and. Um, yeah, it was cool. Some of the most uh, magical years of my life, I, I, I suppose. Um, it was a brilliant time, physically fit. I mean, you know, you're expressing yourself. Lots of women around, um, even though I was with the same woman for the for my whole training. Um, and then from there, I, I, I graduated and uh, went into uh, contemporary dance. I was a choreographer for many years. I won some awards, and um, and then eventually. I transferred into musical theatre because of my dance abilities and then I kind of suddenly I was faced with this situation where I had to, you know, see if I can sing and I knew how to hold a tune um, and then it was kind of, again, playing catch up, just doing a bit of training, trying to get my voice together. I played a lead in the West End in uh, Bombay Dreams, Andrew Lloyd Webber's production with A.R. Rahman did the score, um, did the book. Um, and it was amazing music, an amazing uh, musical for two years. I was kind of talking like that, wobbling my head, you know. Um, I played this uh, character called Akash, and that was brilliant because uh, it was kind of a rags to riches story, and that was kind of, I suppose, um, you know, my launch pad because it was, it was, the story was so close to my own life. It was kind of this guy who had difficulties, and then just became this kind of star, um, and I'm not. I'm not sure I became a star, but I definitely I was in the limelight for 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 a period of time, um, and then from there just was able to get a few more other opportunities. I went into like I ended up in a soap, Emmerdale, um, on on British TV, um, and where I played a a cop for a year. Um, that was a lot of fun. It was funny because I I turned up. And I think I auditioned and the part was, his name was Paul Barraclough or something like that. And then on the first day of shooting, I said, oh, I'm not in this scene. Maybe I should wait in the dressing room. And uh, the director said, no, 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 what are you talking about? You're, the whole scene is you. And I said, I can't see Paul Barraclough, Detective Sergeant Paul Barraclough. And they said, oh, we changed his name to Detective Sergeant Vikesh Dasari. So then I thought, oh, I'm back to playing an Indian again. Um, which was quite funny, so I sort of had a few years there where I just played a lot of Indian characters. Um, and even now I still play, you know, I play some Pakistani characters and I suppose there's no real roles for a half Malaysian, half Welsh man. Um, no one writes those roles. So um, yeah, I'm kind of being shoehorned into, into different areas. Um, and then yeah, I went into TV and film and I had a brilliant time doing that. I really enjoyed myself and ended up in Malaysia um, playing a character called Hung Tua, uh, which uh, and did a whole musical, uh, the biggest musical that Malaysia's ever seen, um, all in Malay, and I didn't know how to speak Malay at the time. So uh, you know, the press were really all over it. They gave me a lot of uh, a lot of stick, um, but f weirdly enough, because of the negative uh, sort of tone of the press, it kind of got a lot of uh, publicity. So by the time I did the role, I think, you know, my skill sets as a leading man in the West End kind of held me in good stead. And I was able to do the job really well. And um, yeah, and, and now it's sort of set me up as a, an actor in Malaysia. And I went into a movie, I did it, I was a lead in a movie where um, there's clips of YouTube on that. And, and then into, uh, um, I suppose what we're here to talk about is um, uh, a, a series called The Kitchen Musical, which was filmed out of Singapore and where I starred with Christian Bautista and Karyl Tatlonghari, um, Arthur Kuna, um, very famous uh, Filipino actors. And um, we had a blast. It was kind of like a, 
like a glee in the kitchen. You know, I was chopping onions one minute, having an argument with some of the cast or some of the characters and the next minute bursting into song. Um, yeah, so that was a lot of fun for me. I really enjoyed that job. Actually, one of the most enjoyable jobs and probably um, the hardest I've worked because, it, I mean, you know, we, we were doing hours that I couldn't believe it were like 17 hour days. And weirdly enough, well, I might be not kind of complaining or, you know, not entirely happy with those hours because there's a lot of hours to, to stay focused. But the Filipino actors were just, they just carried on. I mean, catch sleep whenever they could, you know, just sleep in the corners of corridors and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I had a lot of admiration for how they carried themselves. Um, yeah, it was an, an, what a brilliant job and a brilliant experience. Here. So at the moment, um, now I'm starting to work on, you know, I think with the years of experience that I've had, made a lot of mistakes um, through my career and I, I get to a point in my life where I think, well, you know, that's, that's valuable information. Um, I've started doing a lot of teaching. Um, my, f my friend uh, Matt Cross and myself, uh, we, you know, we've set up boot camps, we go out to Asia and we teach uh, young actors, um, you know, techniques that they probably haven't been exposed to. Um, I've been to LA quite a few times in the recent years and had a lot of acting coaching there. I've learned a lot through my career. I've learned, I go to the Actors Temple in, in London, the Actors Centre in London, so I've picked up a lot of, a lot of stuff along the way um, and learned massive, um, massive amounts on, on the job. So I think now I'm at a point in my life where we're setting up these boot camps, we're setting up these courses and teaching people, you know, the, the fundamentals of acting, the, you know, the do's and don'ts, you know, trying to strip back the mystery of what it is to be a good actor. There are, there are a lot of good techniques that are foolproof that I've learned that you can, that you can work with. Um, my friend Matt Cross is, you know, I mean, he starred in Danny Boyle films and, and such misfits, a very uh, high profile and great TV series. Um, so yeah, we, 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 we're going to be doing a lot more teaching now. Um, we have a group set up, um, and it's going to be, it's kind of based on a technique called the Meisner technique, but with a lot of other stuff that plug into that, that ethos, that philosophy of acting. Um, and it's great because we, you know, we work with these groups and you can see stuff that's serviceable, that's applicable, like immediately you put something into play and you see the actor change. And, and I think, um, you know, gathering and, uh, from what I've spoken to them about, a lot of them have been through you know, their vocational training and not had the same information. It's all very sort of standardized curriculum stuff. So they don't really get into how it actually works when you're on set. Um, you know, the kind of mindset you have to be in, the kind of things you can employ to breathe the life into each character. And even through song, we do that through song as well. We do like, you know, there's loads of people sing well, but it's how you, you know, how you connect to the singer, how you connect to the material. When you, you know, if you buy the singer's story, so they personalize the song, we do all that kind of work, and it's very exciting times. Um, it's very exciting, and I, I, love, I love the reward of seeing people improve so quickly. Wonderful. And so another thing that um, sprang from, from the work that I was doing in Malaysia with a musical, is I go back every couple of years, and I, and I work with the Malaysian Philharmonic Orchestra, and that's an amazing feeling to have, you know, a whole orchestra as, as your band, so to speak, and you're standing at the front of the stage, and there's 2,000 people packing out the hall for each performance. Um, that's been a massive highlight because then I can choose all the material that I love and you know get my arranger to, to orchestrate the songs that I love to sing and 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 you know I mean what m most singers would dream to, to be in that position and I've kind of felt those you know those feelings of being in that position it's, it's been an, an amazing thing to be able to do um, you know from there I, I, I signed a uh, I was with a band called Teatra, I signed a, a record deal with Sony, BMG in, in the UK. We went gold in two weeks, that was an incredible, incredible um, experience. Um, we were singing in front of the Queen at the Royal Variety Show. It was like Seal and John Bon Jovi, all these massive, James Blunt, all these massive acts, sharing the stage with them. Um, so yeah, I've, I've had some pretty amazing experiences.